All right, we have Yahoo Finance's editor at large, Brian Sazi, joining me now. And Brian, you had a big interview earlier uh, today. You sat down with Melinda Gates. I know you talked to her about a whole range of different issues. But one thing that stuck out to me was what she's doing to help women and also help people of color in technology. Yeah, it was a fun chat, good way to start your day, which this conversation took place in the Peninsula Hotel. But talking about her book uh, that just hit the moment of lift, talk about that and what needs to improve to get women advancing, especially in the tech field. Women come forth in droves with ideas for businesses that could be very successful. Less than 2% of women get venture capital funding. Less than 1% of people of color get venture capital funding. So to me, that talks about a structural inequity. And I know there are people of color and women who have fabulous business ideas. And so one of the things I'm doing is not only using my voice, I'm a computer scientist, to say that shouldn't be. I'm also putting capital down. Pivotal, and, through Pivotal Ventures. Through a company, a, an office I have called Pivotal Ventures. And putting money in and believing in these early stage investments, I'm trying to show the way. And I expect a good return on that money, and I'm certain I'll get it. Is there a path out of this? When will we see more women bringing companies to public markets? I think once we start moving funding towards their businesses, that early seed stage funding, then Series A and Series B, then you will have far more female-led uh, companies taking companies public. And before I let you go, very accomplished uh, in the tech scene. Obviously, you started at Microsoft at 22 years old. What does the future of tech look like? I know you believe in the power of software you write in the book. Yes, and I believe, I see tech is so pervasive in all of our lives, right? And even when I go in the developing world, you could, people have a cell phone in their pocket and women can can save a dollar a day in the Philippines and Bangladesh and Tanzania and Kenya. And then they have the means to put their kids into school. So tech is transforming our lives. But I'm a computer scientist by training. When I was in school, we were on the way up, just like law and medicine, to reach parity in terms of men and women. Those numbers have dropped precipitously. And that is a concern to me and why I'm using my voice through Pivotal Ventures to talk about we need more women in computer science and AI because it is setting our future for the world. And women have to have a seat at that table uh, to innovate and create great products and to make sure we don't bake bias into our system. You think some of this tech is just being created is not for good per se. It seems very service oriented and more needs to be done in healthcare. I think you're gonna see more work being done in healthcare in the United States. What I would like to see though is more done in healthcare to help people around the world, not just the highest income nation in the world. So, Sharma, I think what she said, what uh, Melinda Gates said about uh, in the VC community, women not getting funding, it's amazing that that stigma continues. And frankly, it's absolutely embarrassing. Look at all the IPOs we've gotten this year. I haven't seen a lot of women being trotted out to New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. It's just not right. Yeah, it's a trend that we have certainly seen in the industry. And again, those numbers actually listed less than 2% of the VC funding goes to women, less than 1% of people of color. We need to really take a look at those numbers. They are staggering. Brian, real quick, I know you also talked to her about capitalism versus socialism, also taxes. Did yeah. she say anything interesting there? Yeah, on the capitalism front, I have a piece hitting shortly on Yahoo Finance uh, looking at her comments there. She said the wealthy need to be taxed more, but she takes the position almost uh, what we heard from J.P. Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon. Capitalism is not without its flaws. All right, Brian Sazi. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us today.